The other day I was using my uh, trusty compact LTE 5250 uh, laptop, Pentium 1, 16 megs of RAM. My first laptop, and I still use it for uh, various retro computing things. Anyway, I was using it the other day, and it all just kind of shut off. And the power supply started making weird noises. Well, I hooked up my lab power supply, and I found out that there was basically a dead short between the power pins, uh, you know, where you plug in the power brick. So I ripped it apart and started pulling out boards until the uh, short disappeared. And wouldn't you know it, this little daughter board, which appears to be uh, the kind of the main DC to DC converter, is the problem. I found that these two lands here, th this one here and this one here, are actually shorted. I can, yeah, this is harder than it looks. There we go. So that's not supposed to be a dead short. And yes, it goes in either direction. And it shows to be about three ohms. So there's something, something up about that. Okay, so I switched to a better camera. What I'm gonna do is, I need to figure out where these traces lead, at least roughly. Fortunately, the short is not shorty enough uh, to be indistinguishable from uh, a copper connection. I could just stick like several amps through this and see what burns. That's a valid solution sometimes. All right, so this capacitor here is across the, uh, the short three ohms on one side, zero on the other. So I'm just gonna mark it as red. Kind of doubt it's the capacitor, but who knows. Okay, well, I've encountered something a little strange. Uh, so I wasn't having any luck identifying any of the components that uh, were likely candidates for being shorted. I mean, I removed a couple of the little, um, you know, SMD capacitors here that were across the uh, the power lines, but they weren't uh, they weren't the problem, and then. Everything else seemed to be unlikely, so I decided to uh, just dump a couple amps across there and just see what got hot. And I, I couldn't really feel any of the chips getting hot at all, but I felt a little bit of warmth coming around the board in this area. Um, I wish I had a thermal camera, but I don't. But anyway, um, and the only thing that was around here were uh, these little capacitors here. And, well, uh, I desoldered them, measured them, they seem fine, but the short is still there. But the 3 ohms is now closer to 5 ohms. And I flipped the board around, and you see over there, there's like goo or char marks or something like that in there. Bizarre. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean that up and see if that makes any difference. That's so strange. It's got a little bit of alcohol here. Well, let's see if the resistance is different at all. Huh. Okay. It's mostly gone. I'm seeing 60 ohms in either direction. What the heck? What the heck was that? I guess these things leaked a bit and corroded the board or something, I don't know. If anyone knows, let me know in the comments. I'm gonna, uh, let's see, what am I gonna do? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bust out the acetone for a little bit more power. Uh, really give this a clean and then I'm gonna pull these capacitors off as well and see if they have a similar problem because yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I can see a little bit of, of bare copper sticking through there, so something uh, something was unhappy. So I've got my meter hooked up uh, across the, the fault, and it's sitting about 75 ohms, and I'm just going to take this little, I don't know, can opener, I guess, and scrape the area between the pads of the capacitor.
course it's not showing anything now. Oh yeah, there we go. 200 ohms. I just scraped out a little bit of that charred bit and uh, <laughs> it seems to be good to go. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to do here. What would Lewis Rossman do? Probably dig that out, huh? Well, let's see. Alright, so I dug everything out real well with this thing. And uh, cleaned it out with alcohol, and now I'm sitting at just over 3 mega ohms. I think the problem is, is resolved. Um, I don't think there's stuff under these other capacitors. But um, I'm going to go ahead and lift this one off. Alright, so I lifted off some of the extra capacitors here. And, well, what I discovered was more of that black goo, and it really looks like flux that's like slowly carbonized or something like that, or started to eat away at the board. So I went ahead and pulled off a whole bunch more capacitors, and, well, yeah, uh, and the inductor, actually. And, yeah, there seems to be just goo kind of everywhere. I mean, if you look at this chip here, you can see that there's lots of flux on there. So, I don't know, maybe the heat of the inductor or whatever... Um, activated the flux and it just kind of ate through everything. Uh, hmm. Well, I guess that's uh, maybe a lesson there. If that's what's actually happened. Uh, cleaning off your flux. Otherwise, I don't know, 20 years later, it might fail, which I guess is a pretty good service life, but anyway. So just another little tip. Um, when you're desoldering stuff from uh, modern PCBs, they use lead-free solder. If you're using leaded solder, or if you're using a different formulation of uh, lead-free solder, it pays to clean the old uh, solder off of whatever parts you're soldering uh, and the PCB, because if you don't, especially if you're using uh, leaded solder on an otherwise lead-free board, weird alloys will form, and for one thing, it'll be kind of annoying to, uh, to solder, because it'll have lots of little uh, spikes and things, but uh, also the uh, the joint won't be as solid as it could be. I uh, hear it kind of embrittles it. Uh, so yeah, clean off your parts. Um, I just uh, flood the pin with uh, the solder I intend to use and just pull it off either with a solder wick or with um, the little solder sucker. You know, one of these things. That seems to work pretty well. Uh, oftentimes you can just brush a big blob of the uh, new solder over this and it'll just pull all the old stuff off, but clean your tip quite a lot, so anyway. Uh, I'll, I'll try to show you what I mean. This is kind of a tricky shot to get, um, so apologies. But uh, anyway, so I just put a blob of solder on there and just pull off all the old stuff. Let's see if I can show you this from the other side. Just a blob of solder on the tip and the surface tension should pull it right off. Ready, and... Uh-oh. Please hold, let me get the proper power supply. Okay, I got the proper power adapter now. Let's try it now. Oh, looks good. Lights on. Screen's on. Hey, it's working. I mean, the screen's really dim because that's that's just how it is.